Hello everyone, my name is Eric and welcome back to a brand new interview. Today we have essentially the man behind the music of Bioshock, that being Gary Scheiman. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. I'm happy to chat about Bioshock. It's probably been a while, hasn't it? I'm guessing. Well, yeah, the first Bioshock, I think, came out in 2007, I believe. Yes, sir. And, uh, and then the Bioshock Infinite, which was the last Bioshock I worked on. Well, no, I take that back because there was some downloadable content after Bioshock uh, Infinite. So, but that was like 2013. Yeah, uh, 13 to 14. So it's like almost a decade. It's a decade since the last Bioshock. And you heard about the new one that's in development as well, I'm guessing? I believe there is a Bioshock 4 in development, yeah. And we won't dive into that just in case. But anyways, so how is it knowing that you're essentially responsible for so many people's enjoyment of the music behind Bioshock? How did I get the gig? Is no, 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 no. How, how is it knowing, like... All oh, how does it feel yeah. to know that people appreciate... Well, it's a great feeling to have people appreciate your, your music. A lot of composers, uh, you know, don't get um, the attention they deserve. And uh, because you work on a game that has this sort of notoriety and the success and interest, uh, it's really cool. And, and it means that people listen to your music and, uh, and, and you know, appreciate it. It's, it's, it's very satisfying. And we can kind of touch on what you mentioned about how you got the gig about being the composer of, let's say, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, Infinite, or just any video game you've worked on in general. How does someone reach out to you and say, yeah, I want you to be in charge of the music? How, how does that whole process work? Well, with Bioshock, it's just very, very specific. The audio director, Emily Ridgway, requested me. Uh, I had worked with her on Destroy All Humans, and she worked for Pandemic Games on that project. And very much liked my music, um, and thought I'd be great for Bioshock. You know, there's a Bioshock, of course, you know, when they were making Bioshock, no one knew how the game would fare in the in the real world. It was just, it was a, it was a game. It was, but it seemed like a very interesting game, and that was her perspective was that this is a really cool game and an opportunity to do something really unusual and unique musically so that intrigued me of course but i was you know happy to have her just reach out they didn't consider anybody else uh, so that was that's always great you know you sometimes you're up against the numerous other composers and then you're doing demos and etc but i didn't have to do any of that at all i just had to sign a contract and get started you know and out of all three games, which one would you say was the most fun to work on, the most fulfilling, and which one kind of sticks with you to this day as being your favorite that you've worked on? Probably Bioshock 2. I was going to say there's a lot of great pieces within that, and I know a lot yeah. of people really enjoyed the Bioshock 2 soundtrack. Wasn't nearly as stressful. It wasn't as it's, it's not as famous as Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, and I and I didn't get any awards for any of the music in Bioshock Two. Although I think the music is is really, from my perspective, I think I did a really nice job on it. Um, but it it just it just sort of fell between because it was sort of a, you know. It was an interesting game in a lot of ways. It di it certainly didn't break the ground that the original Bioshock broke because that was so original and so unique, and it was a, basically taking you back to Rapture and you know just taking all the gameplay elements and amplifying them and making them cooler in some respects. Like the way you used weapons was, I think, a lot more fun as as a player. Now I'm just talking about from a player's perspective, and uh, it was it was so unstressful. You know, there was some stress in Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, but none of that with Bioshock. Bioshock was just like fun and really, and, and I was so, I was really happy with uh, the people I worked with and the, how the game, um, you know, the opportunities, the musical opportunities I had. Um, that's not to, to disparage Bioshock 1 or, or Infinite. Those are awesome games, and I had a great time working on them as well, um, but more stressful um and um 
Bash Bioshock Infinite in particular was stressful. Um, so yeah, Bioshock Two. I, I I think the music for it is really cool too. I I, I do. I, I I like what I did. Um, but I, I I was scoring that while I was scoring a game called Dante's Inferno. So literally, I would spend half the week on Dante's Inferno and half the week on Bioshock Two. And it was kind of a nice balance because they were, even though they had similar, they're both sort of dark games, you know, um, <clears throat> they were different. So I had, it was nice kind of like a balance, like, okay, now I can do this for a while and I can do something different. And it was, it, that was really kind of a nice contrast. Yeah. It seems like you didn't have to put all your undivided attention into Bioshock 2. So I imagine that took a lot of the stress off as well. Like you said, with working on Don. Yeah. And Michael Donald. Camper was the audio director and he was a pleasure. Not that Emily Ridgway was a pleasure. She's amazing to work with on Bioshock, but there was other, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it was stressful at times, but um, Bioshock Infinite maybe was the most stressful of the three games. Well, yeah. Bioshock was not that stressful for me. It was stressful, I know, for the company making it because they were they were working on something so original and so 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 challenging, you know, that, uh, that just to get it to get it finished and to and to just do all the cool things they accomplished. So it was really it was really great. Um, it's a really great game, and obviously, I'm very grateful because of the success of that game obviously enhances my enhanced my opportunities as a composer that's how you get you know if, if you do something and your music is recognized and the project is well known that's how you get gigs you know that's how you get hired so when coming up with pieces for certain scenes of the game whether it's a death or a very emotional sombering scene how do you as a composer have an ear to actually find that set of music or that piece of music and say that's what I got, or that's that's it. As soon as you have it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, you, you the, I, I would say the most challenging part with the original Bioshock was finding the approach. Um, Emily told me, "Don't it, this game score shouldn't sound like any other film game or movie soundtrack. It should be completely unique," which is challenging. It's like, oh shit. Well, then what do you want? You know. Uh, but it was like, that's what she said. And I think she pushed me to do really unique stuff because of that. That was really helpful, actually. So I really, I was really pressed to create something original. And I had, I had time to experiment. And it took a month or two, really, of experimenting and trying things and not finding it. And then one day, literally finding the right approach. And then it became much easier. That's almost always the case with any score, film or television or game score. Once you find the approach, then it flows. Then you just sit down and you go, okay, what, what, what am I writing for? What, if, it's, it's, if you say it's a poignant, sad, tragic moment, then you start experimenting with you know, the tools that you have as a composer and you just you work until you find something you like and feel, feel good about it. It's, it's really, it's just like um, focus and time and um, hopefully some ability and talent or whatever that all comes together to, and then you and then you send it in and, and you have the the people the, uh, that you're working with listen and give you feedback. They may like it, they may love it, they may not like it, and and ask you to try something different. And that happens all the time. That's part of the process. It's it is a you know give and take, you know approach and that, I, that's I think that's true of almost every composer's experience on scoring anything you know and sometimes it goes like you know that we I always put a version number on every music cue that I write and sometimes it's like version one 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 they're they're, they're like signing off on and v one as I say maybe occasional v2 or something and other times you have like b3s fours five six sevens you know you're like writing and rewriting so it's just it just depends on the project so how many times would you say i don't know for bioshock one or infinite whatever bioshock it was how many times did you have to rewrite something was it kind of a strenuous process where you had to do a lot of rewrites or was it basically like a one and done for almost everything you did the 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 difficulty was finding the right approach and that was many 
tries and attempts to find something really unique and special. And then once, but once I found it, it went pretty smoothly. A lot of V1s were, were um, signed off on. So it was, and that, that's, again, also very typical to like finding the, the, the sound of the music for something is, is, uh, is the hardest part <clears throat> of any project. That was hardest part of Dante's Inferno, for that matter, or whatever. But once, once I had it, once I really, and, and Emily was really happy with it, and obviously she was playing it for people at the studio, then it went smoothly. And I can say from like experience and stuff like that, a lot of people tend to not appreciate the music as much as it should, because I feel music is a big part of the games as well as just the overall experience, whether it's setting the mood, um, kind of giving you audio cues as to whether to be happy, sad, stuff like that. So it means a lot for, I'm trying to think of how to word this properly without sounding confused or rambling, but it just definitely should be pushed more to, to like the front lines as well. Same thing with like the actors and the developers and stuff like that. I feel like a lot, of, uh, a lot more people should definitely give appreciation to where the music is. So thank you for that. Well, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> we need more appreciation, we composers. No, I mean, look, I, I, I don't. I think some people, they may, they may not appreciate the music consciously, but they. <laughs> this is sort of maybe a strange way of saying it, but they appreciate it subconsciously because uh, what music often does is just draw you in, and it's there. You're not even conscious that, like, well, there's music, and it's like really affecting me, but it is, and so it deepens the experience and it really helps them enjoy the, the game. And so, you know, some people hear that and appreciate it and others are, it's just part of their experience and they're not, you know, they're not f focusing on it as something that is significant, yet it is. <laughs> it is affecting them and very much um, helping them to appreciate the game. At least I hope so. Oh, I'd like to think so, especially for those emotional moments. We can use... Uh, Bioshock 2 Minerva's Den, for example, when you play, I believe, The Way She Sees the World, if I'm not mistaken, that might be the title of it. Yeah. And how emotional that whole scene is. You could listen to just the piano playing, and all of a sudden it snaps your mind back to watching him talk about his dead wife. So I love how music is able to do that for video games. It's basically able to snap you back to a certain scene or even a certain memory, like you said. So it's it's pretty wonderful now that I think about it. I think so. I agree. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, how often are you, let's say, recognized for your work within Bioshock? I know you mentioned for Bioshock 2 you didn't win any awards or stuff like that, and in my opinion, that's a shame. Uh, Bioshock 2, in my opinion, has overall the best soundtrack of all three games, in my opinion personal opinion so well, we agree we agree it's a really strong soundtrack and uh, I, I really really put my heart into it and it really was a, a pleasure to to uh, to work on it. it it just has it's it's I don't know I don't know how to describe it exactly it just really has a very full soundtrack I had the resources to record it the way I wanted to record it Bioshock the original Bioshock was did not have a lot of money to record so we had to record with minimal resources etc so really Bioshock 2 was ideal from that perspective and really cool yeah i would definitely say it's like a complete soundtrack from start to finish yeah it really it really is very fulfilling i think and really you know but you know look you're always writing to with the with the uh, limitations that you have, and with uh, what 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 the company needs in terms of uh, music, and so you you do what you do what they you do what they need. That you are writing, you're not writing music for music's own sake. You're right. You're part of a commercial project, and it and you're an asset. You know, if you want to take it down to its minimalist sort of, you're an asset, and so you're creating assets for a game. And so those, which what the game needs or what, what the film needs for that matter, if you're scoring a film, so. 
so for the entirety of the series, I know Bioshock won countless awards. I know two won its fair share of awards and Infinite won its fair share of awards. Which game was the most rewarding to you? Was it the original Bioshock or I imagine it would be Infinite because that one received more mainstream attention as well? So which one was more rewarding in terms of awards? Yes, <laughs> or, BAF, or personal. I won a BAFTA for Bioshock Infinite and a lot of other awards. So that was obviously, from that perspective, was great. You know, to win a BAFTA is quite an honor, I think. I, I wish I had gone to London. I didn't even go to London. I didn't think I was going to win. And I was very busy at that time, and I was sick that week. I had a really bad cold, and I just, just said, I'm just not going to go. I'm not going to fly all the way to London and then lose and then have to fly home with a bad cold and then I have to fly to Seattle to record Shadow of Work on Shadow of Mordor at the time. And so it was just like, I, just, I can't, I couldn't see it. And yet, had I known I was going to win, I, I might have pushed myself to fly for that opportunity to get up and, you know, whatever. But it, it was just great to win. I mean, hey, you got it. That's all that matters, yeah. right? Exactly. There it is right behind my, right Oh, somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> there, the gold one. Yeah, the there mask. That's a that's a uh, BAFTA. I mean, late. Congrats on that, but it's very, very well deserved, in my opinion. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, and that was very rewarding. Um, I, again, I think Bioshock Two was the most musically rewarding. So, in terms of the, but all three <laughs> have very have very musically rewarding moments in it. I loved working on all three. I mean, just really, I, just such unique opportunities. I mean, you know, you can you can write, uh, you may be, have the capability to write very cool and unique music, but unless you have the project to put it into, you know, so lots of times you're not asked to write very unique music. They want something that fits into a more conventional frame, and that's fine too, and I enjoy that. But it's really cool to be you know, pushed to do something really different and really, and, and then having the vehicle, meaning the game to accept, you know, you could, you could have a really radical, crazy music, but if it's like, you know, going into a Mario Brothers game, it would be ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So you, you need a Bioshock, something that crazy, cool, weird world that can accept something so unique. So that's well, that's you know that's the serendipity the luck of luck of getting opportunities you know so it seems yeah. like from the start of the whole series musically um that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of the overall production value of the music as well so going from the original to bioshock infinite how many people would you say were involved with the whole musical recording production besides yourself obviously you mean the work the live players yes well interesting enough Bioshock Infinite we used small ensembles we did not go with a large orchestra so those were all relatively modest sized string ensembles and it wasn't because we didn't have the budget that that game had a very large budget but it was because of the aesthetics that we just I decided to go with and you know, within and conference with the Ken Levine, Ken agreed, was the small, when I say small, I mean, it started out with just a string trios and string quartets, and then I ended up with sort of this group of like 10 string players, three violins, three violas, three cellis, and a double bass, and that was like a really cool um, string section that really was was kind of like the sweet spot. So I, I, I really... Only once or twice did I have an orchestra, and that was mostly for the promotional music when the game was being announced. So that's so that's that's you know I'd have the largest orchestras probably for Bioshock Two, and then Bioshock had had an orchestra, but it was mostly strings with a piano and uh, some small brass on very small brass like a, like one horn and one tuba literally, and. Um, Yeah, piano, of course. It just seems like there was a lot more behind that when you listen to the finished product. So that's 
pretty astonishing now that you I had samples I had a lot of percussion samples and I had other interesting samples that enhanced all that so so that but that was the live portion of it and that's true of almost every score you hear there's samples and synths and other sounds that enhance what the live players bring to the table yeah and it's just the finished product, just hearing it, it's it's a wonderful thing to be able to, I, I'm sure you can probably agree with this, to be able to hear something from start to finish, it just, it's wonderful. And especially when it sets the mood for the entirety of the scene. So, it's astonishing. Well, I, it's, it's a great, it's a great um, creative opportunity for people who, like myself, like to love to write music. It's really, it's really great and... Um, I've written some concert music, but it doesn't interest me to write concert music, to be honest. Um, I, I really like writing for for like a game or film. <clears throat> uh, which one do you prefer? Like, which one do you prefer to do more? You know, I started as a film and TV composer for many years. I, I did. That's all I did. And then in 2004, actually I did score some games in the early 90s for Philips Interactive, but they were just sort of outlier opportunities that came along. But um, I've, you know, I think there's has been a prejudice against games and game music for many years. I think that's changing now, but I have come to really appreciate writing game music. I have come to really love it. and. I think at first I, I would have, you know, preferred scoring films that had more prestige, but I think that's changing now too, interesting enough. You know, I teach at USC, University of Southern California, I teach in a, in a program called Screen Scoring. Screen Scoring is a cohort class of 20 composers who are interested, it's a master's class, um, program, they're interested in scoring films, television, and games. And when I first started about 10 years ago, I would say the majority of the students were interested in film and television and games were an option, you know. And now I would say half the class is really more focused on games than anything. That's what they prefer to do. So I've seen that change over a decade. And of course the game industry is bigger than film and television combined. And so it's like in terms of the types of resources going into making games. I would say it out outsources, it out performs uh, film and television. I think film is in a, a bad, bad place right now. Film is maybe in its least interesting period uh, in my entire life because of COVID, because I, I, you know, less people are going to theaters. There's so much good television now that you can get and stream on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, all that, all those different who, who. So, I think that um, films are, and and, and they, the, the films that you are these big Marvel projects, which I don't particularly like. I'll be honest, I'm not a big Marvel film, you know, super hero film fan. So I'm just, I just got really lucky, as far as I'm concerned, to get involved in games and then to have these really cool un very unique musical opportunities on games that permitted me to do some really interesting things so i'm i'm i i, I think things worked out very very well for myself creatively well yeah i would definitely say so and it's pretty nice to be also recognized for your work as well rather than drowning in almost a pool of composers if that makes sense if you were to stay in film uh obviously people that would automatically think like, oh, a Hans Zimmer or someone of that. But I don't know. It seems like it would just be really nice to be recognized for the work that you do. And I think video games might give you more of an opportunity for that. So uh, what would you like? What would your take on that be? Look, there's a lot of video game composers that sort of toil in the in the weeds and don't, aren't particularly well known, and yet they do some really great work, and etc. So I think maybe to some extent that's m m games have become more like that. Um, but I, I've certainly feel like I've gotten uh, 
and I appreciate the recognition I get. I'm, am I famous? I, I don't think I'm famous. I'm certainly not famous to the general public, but to to the people who really appreciate game music, I think people you often know my work, and I really appreciate that. So I have a lot of people who really love what I do, and that's awesome. I think that's amazing. And, do, and, and fame is so uninteresting to me. I mean, like, what we think of as fame, like some movie star, that just sounds, that just sounds, oh, it sounds like a, like things, a, a nightmare <laughs> to be famous. Sounds awful to me. And I have zero interest in that, you know. Um, so I get the most of, best of both worlds. I'm essentially anonymous when I go out in the public. Nobody knows who I am. But I do have people who really appreciate what I do. And I think that's super satisfying, you know. Especially people who really understand music seem to really appreciate my work so I, I i love that yeah i would definitely say a lot of people at least nowadays are starting to come around to the appreciation of a lot of people that are behind the scenes sure you get the recognition of the voice actors and developers and stuff like that but it's more behind the scenes so i i would definitely say it's awesome to be able to really give more of a platform to those people so that's great I, I i appreciate that too it's it's really it's really you know it's really cool and and you know it, it, and it helps recognition is, is important i like to tell people you know there's like a fire hose of information coming at everybody nowadays with the internet you know there's just so much you know so if you can you you have to constantly remind people that you're out there that you're working that you're doing stuff and and all that is is really so it's important for people to you know know and recognize your your efforts because that's how you get work you get work by um people you know i'm i'm doing a project right now and i literally just got a call right out of or it's actually an email saying hey are you available and i'm like yeah i am available um for i did a i scored a game called Forspoken with bear mccreary which is coming out in october and that was, they called my agent at the time and said, we we're interested in Gary and Bear. And it worked out that we did it together, you know. And then I suppose the final question that I would have is, throughout the entirety of the series life cycle, how, how would it feel knowing that you probably influenced a ton of people to either research music, appreciate it more, actually get into music whether it's producing composing or just making music in general how would you feel knowing that you influence probably a whole generation of people that are up and coming in the music industry well i have no way to gauge how influential i've been to be honest with you i have had people tell me that they've it's my music a young composer say that my music really did affect them and influence them um I'm kind of, if I, I'm sort of known as being sort of this sort of intellectual composer, although I'm really not, I'm really pretty go by my gut, you know, but I do sometimes use techniques that are, are more technical, like 12 tone music and early 20th century music, because it's music that I love, you know, so it wasn't hard for me to write because it was like, yeah, it's just, just like, a, that's just like who I am. So I, I, I if, look, if, if, and I think this is true of film composers like John Williams and, and anybody who writes really interesting music for audiovisual media. People hear this orchestral music and they may never otherwise go to a concert hall and hear orchestra play classical music, you know. And if, if, one, if one or two percentage of the people who now regularly go to concerts are because they heard originally heard music, orchestral music that moved them in some film or game or whatever, then I think that's, you know, it's not why, it's not why we write this music. We write it as an asset to a, you know, and we get paid and all that, but it's, it's such a lovely, you know, positive outcome of what we do. And of course, to, to, to have it do that, you have to write interesting music stuff that makes people go, well, I mean, because like, th there's nothing I've written that, that, you know, or for that matter, John Williams, I'm not comparing myself to John, who I think is the greatest genius of 
and ever of film music, you know, huge fan of his music. But I'm just saying, nothing John has ever done. You couldn't find an analog in classical music, you know. But he has his own voice, of course, and a, and a brilliant voice. So, you know, there, there's just, we're all, we composers for film TV games are all have been influenced by the great concert classical composers, you know, and of course, in non-concert composers as well. Uh, there's a lot of synthesized music being produced nowadays and very sort of ambient music, which is also very powerful and, more, and can be very, very effective. It, it's not, it's not the thing I'm primarily known for, nor is it what I'm primarily interested in. But it's certainly um, a big part of the, the industry these days. So, in any, the, so to answer your question is, I'm very grateful. Anybody who's been influenced by me or if my music has promoted their interest in classical music or you know music in general. So I think that's absolutely wonderful and I, I'm very grateful if that's if that's occurred and we thank you for everything you've done for the series and potentially in the future we never know it's probably not off the table and I wouldn't want to assume otherwise uh, other than that the final thing is there anything that you would like to plug whether it's a website upcoming projects social media anything like that well Forspoken is coming out in uh, October it was delayed the uh, release from May to October as they tweak the game a little bit more. And I, I'm very proud of my score. Um, I wrote it with Bear McCreary, although I wrote almost all of the in-game music uh, and uh, two and a half hours of it, so it's a lot. And I, it's, I, think it's a, I think it's a beautiful score. I'm proud of it. And I, and I think Bear did some great works on some themes and things that he worked on. And uh, I, I absolutely dive into that. You, that's a spectacular game, so promote that I, I i don't i can't talk about the game i'm working on now because it's um super secret <laughs> but um that'll that'll be announced something like in june or something like that and uh yeah that that's about it for now and just um just cranking it out and and enjoying my my life that's all you can really do yeah anyways thank you for taking the time to sit down and have this interview with me i know the fans are going to appreciate it and i appreciate it as well so thank you very much you're welcome eric it's been a pleasure all right so with that being said be sure to check out for spoken i will put a link to a pre-order down in the description as well other than that again thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with the interview and we hope you enjoyed with that being said take care stay safe and see you all later goodbye